three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching another episode of Ash on Comics. Uh, my name is Ash, and this is a comic review of Fear Case by Matt Kent. Um, I discovered Matt Kent over at Valiant. I came on towards the end of that epic Valiant run, which died. <laughs> when I say Valiant run, I mean uh, when Sh Dinesh Sham Dasani, that's a really hard name to pronounce, <laughs> I have to like concentrate. Um, ran Valiant from 2000, I think it was 11, to 2018, I think they sold off, um, yeah, anyways, epic run of a comic publisher, probably one of the best, best in history, I mean, it rivaled Jim Shooter, maybe even better than Jim Shooter's run in the original Valiant launch, we're now on generation four of Valiant, by the way, for those who are counting, um, I don't know if it's better than the Marvel Jim Shooter era, but anyways, suffice it to say, in the modern era, it was it was the best comic publishing um, out there, and it was epic. And I came in at the end. Matt Kent was doing Exo Man of War, and my God, was that epic! Um, now that was my discovery of him. He also did before that. He did a Ninjak series with Clayton Man art. Can you believe that? Um, not Clayton, man. I can mix up the Clayton Crane and... Anyway, Clay Man. You guys know what I'm talking about. He, I, I, I later on was like, oh, Matt Kent. I'm going to seek out more Matt Kent stuff. And he does a lot of this really weird indie stuff. Like, this guy is indie of indies. When, when I think about indie comics, this is what I think about. Today, a lot of indie comics are right up there. It's oftentimes better than the big two. Especially, like I said, that Valiant era was better than the big two. But we're not really here to, talk, to have a talk. This is just a review of this book. Um, I liked this book. I haven't read much of Matt Kent because as you can see on the screen here, the kind of stuff that he does outside of big publishers is really indie. And you're like, what? Well, yeah, you're a big promoter of indie. And I'm like, yeah, I am. But sometimes with indie, <laughs> when you... You know, it's it's like self-published novels, right? Sometimes you just get some really amateur stuff. The art in this book, well, you can see here for yourself. This is a two-page spread. This feels like something someone would have drawn. It's something this feels like something I would have drawn in high school. In fact, I was drawing, <laughs> trying to draw my own comics in high school, um, and I, I'm too much. I'm too much of a snob. I never develop my skill as an artist because I'm one of these people that I'm hypercritical of things, as you may well know. I'm, I'm also that way to myself. And when you're that way and you just realize how bad you suck, it really demotivates you. You don't want, you're just like, I'm going to find something else to do. Um, so I never really pursued that. And it's kind of too bad. I would like to have seen what I, who cares? You see another page. I got some critiques here, not just is the art not good, but things like I can't tell some of the characters because of the fact that you wanted to make the two main characters persons of color. That's fine. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. Might have been a lot easier given the fact that you didn't have a solid artist to make one of them a person of color. Just... So you can tell, I mean, there's an old school technique in comics that you would just give characters different hair colors because, you know, back then artists really didn't draw, they, like they could draw a face, <laughs> a singular man face and a singular woman face for the most part. And so it was just difficult. And this is the same way in cartoons to animation, um, but differentiating with hair color and hairstyles is a really simple tool to do that. These two characters, one's older, one's younger, I guess. Uh, yeah. It, it, later on in the story, it's just difficult to tell who's who sometimes. And when you have to stop and go, wait, is that 
who's talking who which one of them is talking here i don't know um it just you don't want to stop and wait 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 a second wait now this is an interesting it's kind of a buddy cop story uh except that they're secret service they're not really normal police and they're involved in the ark of the covenant now i don't i don't know if I actually know if it's the ark of the covenant but that that piece right there should if you watched raiders of the lost ark then you should recognize that simple that right there and if you haven't watched raiders of the lost ark shame on you it's one of the greatest movies ever made um it's a cool story about these uh these guys very x files just one is a skeptic one is a believer right thematically it's not a rip off of x files but it has some of that similar theme which makes for some good play um and there's some good dynamics in the characters um we see here this guy you know the the, the believer character cop i'm gonna call him cops even though they're secret service um you know his his older his but his partner gives him this book this crazy sci-fi book and he's like oh man what the hell um that's great you know but i didn't get you anything um but psych i actually did um it it looks boring on the page here but it's it matt kent's a solid enough writer the dialogue i was actually getting into these characters i was liking them i was feeling them um and that's good it, it, you, you want to set up you want to set up characters because if you don't care about the characters then you don't care about the story it doesn't matter how good your plot is how good your writing is exploring themes um, commentating on uh, culture or or just uh, society or whatever you want to com comment on in your writing None of that really matters if people don't care to follow along because they're not invested. Uh, and I see this as a big crime, not only in comic books, but mostly, I mean, TVs and movie, modern TVs and movies nowadays. It's all about just bam, slam, action, special effects, spectacle to get you drawn, hopefully draw you in by big eye candy, but you don't care. Um, this book, you do care. And it has this mystery. They discover this woman. You know, they find this little girl, first of all. And, and the idea, the crux of this book is about this box uh, that you have to give it away to a person that you hate the most within three days of receiving it. If you don't, then the box goes to the person that you love the most somehow. Uh, everyone that's investigated this throughout history has gone like insane. If they've investigated more than a year. So these guys, they're like, they, they got these other rookie cops or guys. They're like, we're going to hand this case off to you in 10 days or whatever because our year's up. Uh, that's really not important at this point in the story, so I'm not going to cover that. Um, this Suffice it to say, this story takes place at the end of that period right or that those last 10 days it's kind of like a the typical trope that you see in in cop films where it's like the one cop's about to retire he's just got to make it so many more days on the job so he can retire and you know of course is he going to die before then you know lethal weapon kind of played off that a little bit it's, it's a very common trope matt kent kind of uses uses that without having to use that same exact trope he kind of comes up with a creative twist and that's at least my interpretation i appreciated that um, and you're like, what's going on with this weird, this whole boxing? Um, so we see this woman come to find out. She tells her story about an ex-boyfriend of hers delivered this and said, you know, here you are, you know, you have to give it away within three days and whatever you do, don't open it. That's the other rule. If you open the case, you die. <laughs> so don't open it. But of course, what would a lot of people do? Um, a lot of people like, well, I don't just, so she kind of looks in, what? She explains how she got all mystified. Um, and so, uh, yeah. Her husband was cheating on her. His bad husband. Uh, it starts to... Anyways, I'm not going to go into all the details. I know I've spoiled a lot. But I want you to read it. It is a good book. I think if you aren't opposed to indie darling type stuff, if you're the kind of person that's like, Ash... I don't really care about art. I just give me a good story. 
the Matt Kent's the kind of guy you want to invest in. He's a great writer. Um, this book has only gone one issue so far. I want to say it's a four issue series. Don't don't hold me to that. It could be six. I think it's four. It's not a very long series. Um, it is a mini series, and if this is a, your cup of tea of like a mystery with a little bit of mysticism, a lot of mysticism in this box. Obviously, things are going on. They're trying to solve what is even the case. What does it come from? You know, and I enjoyed it. I wasn't blown away. But I enjoyed it. The art did detract from me. Um, I personally think this will be better to pick up as a trade. Um, but if you're a fan and like collecting, Matt Kinn's stuff is a lot of low print runs. Uh, I missed out on his last series because I never even saw it hit the shelves. <laughs> and I was like, ah, geez, I'm not going to track down these books and spend all this money. So I don't know how available this is for you. But... Um, this is some of the better stuff out there in comics. Like I said, it's, it didn't blow me away, but it definitely made me want to read more. And that's all you can ask for in a first chapter. That's all I really read, right, is chapter one. So um, that's really not a big knock. I'm going to give this... I'm going to give this four stars because I'm not going to subtract a, st a star for the art quality because it is an indie. If this was Marvel or DC, <laughs> an, another star drop. There's no excuse for major league players to be fielding amateurs. But in the world of indies, sometimes you got to take what you can get just to get your story out there. And um, I don't fault that. That's, that's the world of indies. When you go to a minor league baseball game, you expect to see minor leaguers. So four stars, go check it out. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Are you reading this series? Are you intrigued by this series? Did I convince you to get it? Um, and I'll see you next time.